When I was 13 years old, I entered into the, the deepest and longest lasting love affair of my life. And that love affair wasn't with a person or a thing, but with circus. My grandparents had taken us on a family reunion to Club Med, and for those of you who don't know, Club Med has a flying trapeze program. I tried it once, and I was completely smitten. I was this completely awkward, gangly teenager. And when I flew through the air, I felt like this graceful creature. I felt close to God, even though I had not been raised in a religious family by any means. I felt spirit was coming through me. I shake even thinking about it. That excitement of flying, the embodiment of spirit in human form. And I became really in those moments much more than myself, or at least what I knew of myself. Whether that was a part of me that I didn't know coming through me when I flew, or whether it was God or spirit, I don't know. But I know that the feeling I had was one of unlimited potential. And that's the feeling that I still love about circus, and one of the things I continue to cherish about circus to this day. So for the next 10 years, I dedicated my life to becoming a circus performer. And for whatever reason, I also had, was working under the impression that I was behind. Even though I started fairly young, I thought that I had a lot of catching up to do, that I wasn't at the advantage that other people are, that my body wasn't the right form, that I had to work harder than anybody else to get where I wanted to be. And the advantage to that was that I worked my butt off, was that I worked tire tirelessly, and I was going to prove both to myself, to my parents, to the world, that I could do this, that I could make a career out of circus, which at that time was actually pretty rare. The disadvantage was that I was under the illusion that once I was able to prove myself, that those feelings of self-doubt, of low self-worth, would disappear. I was very lucky in that I got to a place in my career where I was at least momentarily able to take in that I had finally arrived. I was performing in Europe at the time, and I was getting recognition, as much as a circus performer can get recognition in this world. And I felt confident for a moment. And once that moment passed, I realized that I was at the, this point where I had succeeded, and yet, I still felt like I wasn't good enough. I thought, when I'm at the top of my career, I will feel loved. I will be in front of audiences, and that will fill me. I will feel good enough. I can take it in. I can receive. Once I'm successful, I can feel good about myself. And that didn't happen. And in fact, that is a lesson that even though I learned very acutely at that point in my life, I continue to have to relearn. And I forget and remember and forget and remember that success isn't what brings me happiness, that that feeling of self-worth has to come from a place inside. When things started to unravel for me, the passion that had sustained me, that helped me kind of push through my childhood and push through all the dark areas I had felt, was no longer enough to keep me going. And so, very serendipitously, I stumbled upon a paradigm called process-oriented psychology, which, for those of you who aren't familiar with, was started by a man named Arnold Mendel. And what appealed to me about process work was the same things that had originally caught my interest and my passion with circus. Process work believed in the importance of our experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly. Moreover, process work believed that that which makes us marginal, that which makes us often insecure, stand out, that which makes us the freak show, is that which makes us more, most powerful when we actually have the courage to explore it and embrace it. The parts of ourselves that we hide, that we fear the world will judge us for, that we fear our own judgment, when we actually take the courage to go in and explore those and embrace those, those are the parts that make us most powerful. Circus is the same way, and this is where my passion came in. Circus is about bringing the freak show out. This is the place that historically the weird ones, the strange ones, could go to celebrate their unique abilities, and the society at large would hold that space. So, after I decided to go study process work psychology so that I could also become more whole, 
more develop personally and not just depend on an outer career success, I decided I wanted to combine my two interests, my love of process work and my love of circus. And so I founded the Circus Project four years ago with the goal of creating transformative experiences both for the actors involved, for the youth whom we served, and for the audiences. People often ask me, wow, it's so great that you created this experience, the Circus Project that helps reach at-risk and outreach youth, outreach to at-risk youth. And for me, creating the Circus Project was actually a very selfish endeavor because I took from my interest and my passion, and even though there is a degree of circle, uh, personal sacrifice in, in involved, I feel it fuels me, and ultimately that's what keeps me going through the challenges. So there's no martyrdom involved in this. It's really me following my passion, and I believe strongly that when each of us follows our passion, that itself is a service to the world. So the Circus Project, uh, we have a bunch of different programs. We have a professional performing troupe. We have public classes where we teach children and adults like yourself how to get in the air and turn upside down. And one of our main focuses is on outreach to homeless and at-risk youth. And we have a year-long program in which we combine personal development, so we have kids in therapy every other week, um, and we do a lot of exercises that help empower these youth, where with, um, integrated with very um, intensive training in circus arts, in clowning, in aerial work, in acrobatics. And at the end of the year, these youth perform in a showcase where they really tie it all in together. And so I have for you guys a video of our showcase from last year so you can see a little bit about what we do and about the effect that Circus has in working with these youth. Welcome to the Circus Project's performance of Cirque Odyssey. When I met these kids, I immediately saw the deeper layers of them and wanted to do something to bring that out so that the audience could see that as well. This is one of the best nights of my life right now. One piece I think is really beautiful about how our performance has been here is that it's right outside of Park Blocks where we've all spent so much time when we were homeless. All those kids have developed in amazing ways and really embraced those parts of themselves that maybe once weren't so acceptable or once were the things that marginalized them. And in the circus, those are the things that when given light, make them the most powerful. I came out here to Portland to try and find my path in life. And I came here with a backpack, a sleeping bag, and a tarp. And now I've gotten off the streets. I've gotten a job. I'm in an apartment. This is proof positive that you can do anything. I grew up doubting myself, and it wasn't until I found Circus Project that things really began to fit into place. The future seems so big and so wide open for me. I've been sober for 14 months, and then I'm going to Portland Community College this winter semester. When you're focusing on these little Bits, you look back later and you realize how, how grand they've all come together to be this gigantic thing. The future for these kids is really in their hands. Whatever they decide to do, whether that's circus and coaching and performing, hopefully that they can use these skills that they've developed in this year and really apply those. Because the things that you need to develop in circus, like strength, flexibility, self-care, working well with people, trust. Those are the things you need in life to succeed. Before Circus Project, I was leading a life of crime and I was putting myself in danger every day. And I just thought, oh, I'll just settle down wherever I want to. And it doesn't really work that way. Now it's like, I got myself a job. I got myself an apartment. And all of those dreams that I still have are just definitely more attainable because I can see the steps that I can take. I can't even really fathom why Jen would want to take beat up, used, broken street kids and instill in us this want and somewhat of a need to be able to push ourselves and believe in ourselves and make ourselves better. There was times when I chose to be homeless and there was times when I definitely did not choose to be homeless. I feel lucky that I have been able to roll in the dirt and come up clean. Camping trip's over and the real work begins.
I'm thoroughly pleased with everything that's happening now with myself and the way that I have shaped up and become who I am, with everyone else that's involved around me being who they are. This is a truly wonderful thing and I really hope that it continues on in the future because many more people need to have this opportunity in their lives. This is a wonderful one for me. These kids have been able to stick with this program for a year and that they've been able to achieve what they've been able to achieve is beyond their wildest dreams. And what I hope is that they get to realize that they can do anything that they dream about because that's what this is really about, is that those dreams are attainable. They don't come easy. You have to work really hard for them and you should never stop believing in them. That was um, from an episode on a new TV documentary series, Turning Point, that just aired recently on PBS, and we were lucky to be featured um, in that program. Next, I have two truly extraordinary individuals to introduce you to, Meg Russell and Blythe Olson. Meg and Blythe both graduated from our intensive training company for Youth in Need in 2010, and they're here today. Meg has um, choreographed an original piece on the trapeze, and Blythe Olson will be accompanying her on piano with an original composition.